To play most woodwind instruments, the musician blows air through a reed made of cane. The reed vibrates to create sound, just like the vocal cords in our throat. A bassoon reed is comprised of two thin blades of cane rather than one, so it's called a double reed. A bassoon reed has twin blades at the top that vibrate to produce sound, and a tube at the bottom that fits onto the bassoon's lead pipe. The reed maker begins with a stalk of cane that's almost an inch in diameter. With a single strike of a cylindrical X-shaped blade, he splits it into four equal strips, then uses a guillotine to cut each strip to a length of four and three-quarter inches. After soaking a strip in water for about eight hours to soften the fibers, he laterally slices off about half the cane. Then he places it in a precision gouger and thins it to approximately 0.05 inches, give or take a fraction of an inch. He verifies the thickness with a precision measuring tool called a dial indicator. He clamps the cane in a reed-shaped template and trims away the excess. This gives the cane a distinct contour. He removes the outer layer of rigid bark and thins out the middle, which will become the dual blades of the reed. Next, he cuts a pattern that will enable the reed to vibrate at the frequencies required to produce the bassoon's full range of 44 notes. Then he scores both ends of the cane to make them flexible enough to be bent into a half circle. He folds the cane in half and ties it with a piece of brass wire. The fold will form the double blades at the top of the reed. The opposite ends, once bent into mating half circles, will form the tube at the bottom. Keeping the cane wet, he heats a cylindrical forming mandrel over the flame of an oil burning lamp. Then he wraps the tube end tightly with twine. The heat softens the cane's fibers, molding them under pressure from the tightly wound twine to the shape of the mandrel. This forms the two adjoining half circles into a perfectly round tube. After a few seconds, he removes the forming mandrel and unwraps the twine. He inserts a holding mandrel of the same diameter and wraps it with a rubber band. He puts the reed aside to dry for about a week. This sets the shape permanently. When he unwraps and unfolds the reed, he sands the edges of the two adjoining half circles so that they meet perfectly. Then he refolds the reed, securing it with three wires spaced at specific intervals. The distance between the wires in concert with the curved shape of the cane finalizes the contour of the reed, which determines how it vibrates. Once the wires are correctly positioned, he wraps the tube end of the reed with strong synthetic string. This will contain the tube dimensions when the reed is re-soaked. He coats the string with glue to further strengthen the tube. Once the glue dries, he reams the inside of the tube to fit perfectly into the bassoon's lead pipe. He places a ruler against the first wire and makes a mark of just over an inch out toward the folded tip. Then he clips off the folded tip. The reed now has double blades that vibrate when the musician blows air through them. Because cane is a plant, not a synthetic material, there are slight natural variations from reed to reed. So bassoonists make the last minor adjustments themselves with profilers and other tools until their reed vibrates beautifully.